there are several conditions that can affect the cervical spine. As we mentioned in the anatomy, the, cer the spine is formed of these bony blocks of column vertebrae, and between them are the discs. And in the back here, there are the joints. And inside the spinal column is the spinal cord. And from the spinal cord comes out nerve roots that go and supply the upper extremity. Conditions in the spi cervical spine include herniated disc, where a piece of the inside of the disc comes outside the disc and pinches on the spinal cord on the nerve root. That can lead to what we call radiculopathy, which is pathology of the nerve root, which can include pain, numbness, or tingling or weakness in the upper extremity. It can also pinch the spinal cord, which can lead to myelopathy, which is a condition that can affect the gait, bowel bladder control, or also numbness and loss of fine movement in the upper extremity. Other conditions include stenosis, which is narrowing of this canal that basically houses the spinal cord. With stenosis around the spinal cord, that can all cause the same conditions, whether it's radiculopathy affecting one or more nerve roots or myelopathy affecting the spinal cord. There are other conditions that affect the spinal, uh, the cervical spine, including tumors, infections, or deformities. And having any of these can affect both the integrity of the spine, causing neck pain, or can affect the neural elements with the same manifestations of radiculopathy and myelopathy. When it comes to treating cervical spinal conditions, the mainstay of treatment usually is conservative treatment. We start usually with physical therapy and medication. And after that, if the patient doesn't respond, then we proceed to the next step, which is pain management, including cervical epidural injection. And if the condition does not respond to conservative treatment, or the initial presenting condition in, includes significant compromise to the spinal cord or the nerve root, then the last resort is, is surgery. We usually try to focus on minimal invasive spinal surgery if it is applicable. And the main treatment uh, for these spinal conditions in the cervical spine when it comes to surgery include approach from the front or approach from the back. And we tailor the back or the front depending on whether the, the pathology that is causing the pinching on the nerves is in the front or the back. Usually it entails decompression, which is removal of the pressure on the nerve, and fusion, which is fixing two vertebrae together and eliminating the disc where there is a pathology. Or we can go in the back where we do decompression laminectomy, which is removal of part a window in the lamina or the bony elements in the back compressing on the spinal cord or the entire lamina compressing on the spinal cord with or without instrumentation. As an alternate option, especially in younger individuals, when we remove the disc which is causing compression on the neural element, we replace it with a mobile disc that can actually preserve the function.